Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us right here. Let's tell you that President Muhammad Buhari will address the nation tonight at 8 o'clock. The president's nationwide broadcast is expected to address the current lockdown in Abuja, Ogun, and Lagos states in the efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19 in the country. This will be President Buhari's third nationwide broadcast since the outbreak of the virus in Nigeria. It's made an address on the 29th of March, 2020, President Buhari declared total lockdown in the three states for two weeks, after which he extended the lockdown by another two weeks on Monday, April the 13th. Kano State Governor, however, Dr. Abdullah Ganduji has directed the State Ministry of Health to carry out VABA autopsy of those who lost their lives to various strange ailments over the weekend. There's been a lot of stories around how those people died and perhaps getting to the bottom of the cost of their death. So that's from a part of our conversation tonight, assessment of the lockdown order, the situation in Kano State, and whether or not will the president extend the lockdown? If he does, what does this mean? Let's get talking. Uh, joining me from our Buja studio, uh, Mr. Mohamed Jamo is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Mr. Jamo. Uh, give us a sense of um, what you think... Uh, uh, the president could uh, do tonight. Do you think the president would extend the lockdown? Thank you very much. But may, let me correct the introduction. I am not Mohammed. I am a Comrade Richard Tiso Mnenga. Uh, from the way I look at it, I think uh, the president will most likely extend the lockdown. Because, as you speak, there are new cases. Just last night, we were told that 93 more cases have been discovered. And it is most likely the 93 people must have had contact with other people. And as required, the people who are suspected to have contacted the 93 cases discovered, they have to go for quarantine and they, they have to be quarantined for two weeks so it's most likely the president will have to extend the lockdown even though there are some negative consequences because that, that, that thing has helped a lot of inconveniences on some Nigerians especially those who end their livings by doing their daily businesses because if you earn your living by doing your daily business, if you are locked down for two weeks and your businesses are no longer going on, it will be difficult for you to feed yourself and your family. But coming to think of it, we we'll have to look at the other side of the story because if it is not locked down, the thing will have to spread. The thing will spread and that is what we are skeptical of. So from the way I look at it, the president will have no option than to increase the lockdown for fear of uh, the unknown. Because as I earlier said, the 93 cases that were discovered last night, the people must have contacted other people. And as required by the body responsible for that, the people have to be studied for two weeks. So it is most likely the president will have to extend the lockdown, so, not mind uh, the negative consequences. Yeah, sorry. Apologies to coming in. And uh, if you look at it, you, the, the big question is the president, president talked about what ha happened in the first phase of the lockdown and what was also done uh, in anticipation of when he extended it at the second time around. So if he's going to do that again, the big question will be, has the lockdown done its job? Has it been well exercised? Yes, I can say that the lockdown did a lot of well, good because it reduced the spread of the COVID-19. Because I know very well if this was not done, would have been hearing another story by now. Because the lockdown prevented people from gathering in public places 
and it stopped people from having direct contact with those who were involved. So I know the first time it was done, it helped because I know some public office holders and some people, some notable Nigerians who were tested positive. But because of the lockdown, it prevented them from having direct contact with their domestic staff, with their families and others. But if the lockdown had not taken place, they would have contacted their families, their domestic staff, friends, and that would have made the thing to spread wider. So in the first instance, it helped. And I'm sure the second lockdown also contributed in stopping the spread of that. Even though we have had uh, new cases, but you know the way we Nigerians are. Many people are not obeying the laws. Because if you go to town, some people are still doing their normal lives, especially in some places that the security agencies cannot easily assess. So uh, uh, exactly where I, I probably would love to uh, ask the question, Mr. Menga, that the economic implication of the lockdown in some parts of the world, they're easing, uh, because of the economic implication, they are easing uh, the lockdown out gradually. Do you think that um, it, it would be right for the president to give an outright lo uh, lockdown across board or we should ease uh, some part of the econ uh, uh, economic aspect of our lives? It would be good for the president to make a total lockdown because life is for the living. If you consider the negative consequences of the lockdown and you say that it shouldn't be extended, it will cause us more harm than good. If you boost our economy and people are not alive, who are going to be the benefactors, who are going to benefit from the economic boom? So I think no matter what, is the negative, no, no, no matter what are the negative consequences, we have to look at the, uh, at the other side. Because, you see, I was talking to some people, I'm from Benue State, I was talking to some people from my village, and they told me that some people came back from Kano yesterday. Some of them told me some people came back from other states. So, and nobody, some, some people came back from Lagos. I don't know how they, managed, how they managed to come back. But if such people are allowed to keep on trooping from one state to another, you see, that thing, that thing will be spreading. So I think it won't be out of place if there's a total lockdown. And let me give you an example. You see, in the local government in Benue State... Apologies, Mr. Menga. Uh, we are, need to take our break on the program. When we come back, we look more, especially into the situation in Kano State and the intervention of the federal government. The state government said that they are doing a VABA autopsy. What does that mean? There is a sort of an emergency which the federal government said they are paying attention to in Kano State. More on what the president is to say and the situation in Kano after this break, everyone. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us at 8 p.m. tonight. That's going to be uh, just well over 30 minutes from this moment. President Mohamed Buhari will address the nation in anticipation of what could be a decision to extend or relax the lockdown order or accept the proposition from the state government, uh, state governors, asking the federal government to impose an interstate border lockdown. What will it be? Stay with us right here as we'll bring you that speech at 8 p.m. By the way, we're analyzing what could come out of that speech and, of course, the situation in Kano. Let me get you to introduce uh, my guests, other guests that come into the studio in our Abuja studio, Mr. Muhammad Jamo has since joined us, uh, where we've been speaking with Mr. Richard Menga. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming in. Let me begin at uh, this uh, moment with uh, Mr. Muhammad Jamo. Um, we've been discussing and assessing the lockdown policy. Do you think the president will extend the lockdown based on the figures of the cases that we have currently? Yeah, hello viewers and uh, hello my brother over there in Lagos. Uh, definitely I foresee the extension of the lockdown because if we look at the situation in the country, the whole essence of this lockdown was to achieve a particular fact whereby all contacts can be able to be traced within the stipulated first 14 days. 
And then when the cases continued to appear in different states, it was extended for another 14 days. And with the recent development that is coming, especially the Kano issue, whereby even recently where the state governor has been sending some of the al to different states and five were discovered in Kaduna, that shows that there is more than a person reason why the president at this particular time must extend uh, this lockdown so that uh, more contacts can be able to be traced and then uh, identified and then isolated for uh, treatment. So I see it from all perspective that the president needs to toe that line of extending this lockdown at this particular juncture. I think that's my take on it. Uh, Mr. Jomo, uh, again, you look at the fact that in this lockdown, the commercial city shot to business, Lagos. The, the capital uh, of the country, the seat of power, also on lockdown. Uh, and you wonder what could be uh, a consequence of a month of no real business for the nation, no much money being made. What could be a possible consequence should it go further than it is presently? Well, if you talk about uh, the capital city and uh, the trade city, that's Lagos and uh, even Kano, uh, at this particular time being locked down, uh, then you can look at it from global perspective. All over the world, virtually, New York uh, is in, on lockdown, uh, London is in lockdown, Paris is in lockdown. So all the global hubs for the world commercial cities and business centers are equally on lockdown. Although it must be slightly more different here in Nigeria or in Africa, whereby we have more people who cannot be able to survive a day without going out to fend for their living businesses, and those people are really suffering from it. So I see the most important thing is for government to be able to go out of, out of its way and uh, spend more money and uh, provide palliatives for people. For business, uh, definitely so many business have been affected and I don't think with the global trend whereby even the crude oil that Nigeria uh, has to sell before they can be able to make money that's why it's always good to save for the rainy day but be it as it may there is no funds that has been saved now that can be used to well, uh, Jamo, push uh, some of the effects for the businesses all right so I, I wanted to ask you uh, you are familiar with what is happening in Kano for example uh, the handling yeah. of the federal government in the, this COVID war, yeah. how are you impressed with it? Well, let me tell you one thing. From my own angle, uh, first of all, for the federal government to come to any state to give its own support and uh, to take over, they must work with the state governments, definitely. But the sad part of it is that the state government in Kano was being a little bit more political than being proactive in the first instance. All states, if you look at Lagos for instance, Lagos has done so much first in identifying isolation centers and providing all the necessary amenities needed, including training of the medical doctors. But if you look in Kano, there was no any specific treatment or training that was given to the medical doctors in Kano. And even the state government didn't do quite enough enough in that particular ground the state governor always keeps saying he has identified three isolation centers one of the isolation centers he always talks about is the Dawakim Kudu Konet Dawakim Kudu isolation center it was donated by Pfizer it has been there it has been there in existence the other isolation center, it was a donation by Ali Kodongo to. And the third isolation center, which is in uh, Nasarawa local government, was a hospital which was built long ago and was uh, launched by President Muhammad Buhari. So there was nothing new that was there in place. As I'm speaking to you today, if I will tell you what is happening in Kano, 70% of the medical doctors in Kano have all absconded and abandoned their duty posts. 
because they are scared. They have not been provided with the personal protective garments which they can use so that they can uh, protect themselves. The only thing the state hospitals and even the Amina Kanu teaching hospital is attending to are the accident and emergencies. When you go to the hospital, you find that quite a large number of people waiting to even see the doctors. The doctors uh, that Mr. are there yeah. even at the accidents and emergency, they are crying, they are suffocated. There is no motivation. I'm telling you, it is a very, very, very sad development what is happening in Kano. Right, we With heard this the, kind the of PTF, but, but we need to go how now. Do you expect, me... How do you expect the federal government to come in and support? Yeah, so uh, let's, we need to close the program now. Let me get uh, a 30 seconds uh, comment from Mr. Menga. Uh, for the issue in Kano, are you worried about uh, some of the commentaries that you are hearing about Kano and the situation there? Yes, uh, Mohammed, my brother, has said everything. He has, he has, Mohammed has said everything about the Kano incidents. But I want to call the attention of the federal government to Benue State too. There is a local government called Kwanda Local Government, where I come from. It is on the border of Cameroon and Nigeria. As I'm talking to you now, the Turan clan in Kwanda local government has been invaded by people who are suspected to be either headsmen or bandits. And about over 100,000 people are, are, are just in the field there. That is contrary to the social distancing policy uh, of the current, the, current, the current policy of, the, of, the, uh, of social distancing. And you see, if there is any outbreak in Cameroon, it can easily come there because it is, it, it, it is on the border of Nigeria and Cameroon. So any little outbreak in Cameroon will come there. And if, if the refugees are met there, uh, if they are contacted, it will, it will easily spread. So I'm calling on the federal government that just as it is done in Kano, their attention should also be diverted to Benue State in Kwanda local government, where a, where a whole settlement has been, uh, been sacked by some Chamenga, thank you so, so much for your good. thought tonight, and as well as uh, Mr. Mohamed Jamo. Thank you so much uh, for your thought tonight, as we anticipate President Mohamed Buhari's speech at 8 p.m., uh, right here on China's television. That's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye. <laughs>